Welcome to Binary Ninja Basics. This is an overview of some key features of Binary Ninja that will get you going quick. This week, we're going to take a look at how to open files. Something as simple as that actually has a lot of different ways you can do it. You can drag and drop, right? You can just drag it onto it and the default analysis just goes. Uh, same thing with file open, default analysis just goes. We want the out of the box, like just very quick, very fast, do the right thing most of the time to work. Uh, but there is also control shift O. That's the open dialog, but it's the open with options dialog, right? And so we can see that here, and that's gonna like let me customize the analysis. Both Ida and Ghidra by default assume you wanna like mess with your analysis options. And we say like, no, like just do the right thing. But then if you wanna go make your changes, go in and, and use this, this separate menu option. Uh, and you notice that it was a control shift plus O opens. So if you also hold control and shift and click one of the recent items on the recent list, it does the same thing, right? So that's actually gonna do the same thing as if I did control shift O and it gives me the like open with options. You can also, the, the numbers next to these, you can just hit the number to open the file directly. So I've got no binaries open. I can just hit one. Uh, I use that, I use one a lot. Uh, there's a couple of more like esoteric ways that you can open binaries. Uh, one of which is there's actually a URL handler so this is kind of, it seems kind of weird. Uh, I can open like bin ls and it will ask me if I want to use Binary Ninja. Yes, open link. Uh, and I think Binary Ninja itself, so it's going to warn me. It's never going to do this by default because uh, we don't want people to be able to like pwn you with like a Binary Ninja bug by, you know, dr browser drive by. So it always asks you, and but like, it's super nice to be able to just be like, yeah, please open that file. And you can, you can specify a local file path. You can specify a, like a web URL that will download the file and open it. Uh, this is actually a neat trick for like integrating Binary Ninja into like other workflows and other like apps. You can like automate like via a web app, like where you're clicking around some files, you've got some internal corporate thing or just some, you know, kind of tool you've got. The URL handler also supports like search and navigation. You can actually specify like where to go in a particular binary, one of my favorites is actually using a command line parameter. And the reason it's one of my favorites is because of this little trick that a lot of people don't know. So I, I, I launched Binary Ninja with the command line parameter, right? So obviously, duh, it opens up the file. That's nothing. But if I uh, use the restart command palette, which I like binding to a hotkey, which is not a default, um, but I, I like using this a lot, uh, I can actually hit hit the hotkey to restart Binja, and it remembers the command line options it had before and restarts in the same state. So that's super nice. Like if you're debugging an architecture plugin where you've actually got to restart Binja and you don't have a commercial license where you can just do it headless and standalone. There is a, a Linux setup script uh, that will actually do some stuff that you would expect of like, we have no installer on Linux, it's just a zip file, but this can actually set up uh, like binding so that BNDB files, you can double click to open Binary Ninja, which I guess is another way that you could open it. Trash view is also part of like the dedicated like open for malware. Uh, if you if you actually do uh, open for triage, like as a specific file picker that's meant to like let you just pick a bunch of a bunch of files. Like I can go to my samples folder. Like I could you know open like a bunch of them all at once. And when you open something using the triage view, it does very little analysis. 